This is a 13 Wham News special report. A Monroe County grand jury handed up an indictment against Lovely A. Warren. Rochester's mayor, Lovely Warren, charged today with violating state campaign finance laws and scheming to defraud. Charges the mayor has repeatedly denied. I believe that this is a political witch hunt. This is not political. I am the chief law enforcement officer for Monroe County. I was presented with an investigation. I reviewed the facts. Lovely Warren remains Rochester's mayor today. She will be arraigned on those felony charges Monday. Good afternoon, I'm Jenny Ryan. We will return to that baseball game after this brief news update. The indictment handed up today also names the city's finance director and the treasurer of the mayor's political action committee, Rosalind Brooks Harris, also named Albert Jones, the mayor's campaign treasurer. These charges are not connected to the mayor's, are connected to the mayor's re-election campaign in 2017. Today's indictments, the result of a two-year investigation by the State Board of Elections and the DA's office. We have team coverage now, beginning with Andrew Banis. Yeah, Jenny, this comes after a series of complaints were made to the New York State Board of Election Division of Law Enforcement between April and November of 2017. Today's announcement of felony charges against Mayor Lovely Warren and two former campaign officials, Albert Jones Jr. and Rosalind Brooks Harris, follows a series of complaints made to the State Board of Elections between April and November of 2017 about allegations of campaign finances being mishandled during the mayor's re-election campaign. We are here this afternoon to update the community on the conclusion of an investigation that has had much speculation over the years. Controversy has swirled since the 2017 election, accusing Mayor Warren of using a fundraising committee to get around donation limits and pay for campaign expenses. 13 Wham first reported on the state investigation at the end of August. At the time, Mayor Warren had this to say about the campaign finance allegations. You that this is a political witch hunt? This is not political. I am the chief law enforcement officer for Monroe County. I was presented with an investigation. I reviewed the facts. I presented this case to, well, my team presented it to a grand jury as we would any other case. And the result is the indictment that we're handing down today. Prosecutors say Warren's entire police action committee was set up to be fraudulent and that funds raised through it violated state campaign finance laws. The political action committee as well as the campaign itself raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is involving all of that campaign finance activity in those four years. D.A. Dorley says she doesn't believe the indictments impacts the mayor's ability to serve, but acknowledged how allegations against elected leaders impact public trust. It's, it's a horrible thing to see in any community. And of course, I was you know, very disappointed. But again, you know, in the position that I am in, I have to you know, set emotions aside and I've got to look at the facts and I've got to look at the law. And if a prosecution is warranted, then it's my obligation to go forward. And that's exactly what happened in this case. And Jenny, Mayor Warren will be arraigned Monday at 4 o'clock. Reporting live in Rochester, Andrew Banus, 13 Wham News. All right, thank you, Andrew. The mayor's attorney today is defending her, saying she is innocent and did not knowingly violate the state law. 13 Wham's Tyler Brown joining us now with more on what the attorneys of the three accused are saying this afternoon. Tyler? Well, Jenny, the key word in their defense tonight is intent. The attorneys do not believe that Mayor Warren nor anyone that worked on her campaign had any intent to commit the crimes they were accused of. For years, Mayor Warren has been on the record saying they were simply errors made in the bookkeeping while also calling the investigations a witch hunt against her. Her attorney, Joe D'Amelio, echoed that same message, claiming errors were made and the mayor did what she could to fix them. D'Amelio says he's worried about the recent protests on City Hall and the Daniel Prude situation's impact on the grand jury's decision. Unfortunately, um, for things that have happened in our city uh, over the last several weeks, uh, we thought it would be a difficult time for the grand jury to hear evidence in this case. Um, and that was compounded by um, uh, a lot of publicity, uh, some of it bad, some of it good, but a great deal of uh, of uh, controversial publicity uh, regarding uh, the mayor. 
D'Amelio says the mayor's job will not be affected by the arraignment on Monday, and the mayor does continue to do her mayoral duties on, on Monday. Live in Rochester, Tyler Brown, 13 Wham News. The mayor and two others are facing Class E felonies, charges that carry a maximum four-year prison sentence. But as Dan Schrack reports, all three will be able to continue their work even after they're booked, as Tyler just pointed out. Dan? Jenny, because these are nonviolent felonies, Mayor Warren, Albert Jones Jr., and Rosalind Brooks Harris will only receive citations when they walk into central booking. Now, these charges come at a very challenging time for the mayor. For her, following weeks of protests, calling for her resignation over the city's handling of the Daniel Prude case. Today, the DA's office talked about the importance of campaign finance laws and why this should matter so much to the public. We all want our elections to be run fair, and these are laws on the books to allow and ensure that people who are entering political office follow the rules so that there is equal access to everyone. The basis of that, this allegation is that that political action committee was used to circumvent that amount and create an unfair advantage. Now, if the mayor is found guilty on at least one of these felony charges, she would lose her law license. It's not clear at this point in time if she would be required to resign. Live in Rochester, Dan Schrack, 13 Wham News. All right, thank you, Dan. This case dates back to red flags raised during the mayor's re-election campaign. <laughs> Mayor Warren was just two years into her first term and work was already underway on her re-election. A political action committee, Friends of Lovely Warren, was involved in raising money for her bid. Warren's opponents, Rachel Barnhart and James Shepard, filed a complaint with the State Board of Elections. They claimed the Warren campaign was improperly moving money between campaign committees to skirt contribution limits. A 13 wham analysis of Warren's campaign and PAC filings took a look at the top 20 donors over four years. It found the donors moved back and forth, donating to alternate funds, allowing them to give almost 124000 more than finance limits would allow. Together, the State Board of Elections and District Attorney's Office began their work investigating those claims, issuing subpoenas, and putting the case before the grand jury. And those indictments handed down today. This afternoon, a statement from City Council President Loretta Scott reads in part, I'm saddened by this news. I believe in due process and that everyone is innocent until proven otherwise. I want to assure the community that the business of the city will continue uninterrupted. Wrapping up our coverage, a Monroe County grand jury has voted to indict Mayor Warren and two former campaign officials on two felony counts related to allegations of campaign finances being mishandled during her re-election bid in 2017. 